Good morning. My name is Dave. For those of you who don't know me, I'm the youth worker here at All Saints. And it's brilliant to be with you as we continue our series on the fruits of the Spirit that we're going through all this summer. We've reached patience. So we've already had love, joy, peace. And now we're on to patience. And I, I think that all of these fruits are, are very human ways of interacting with the world. I think this is what, what Paul's getting at in Galatians with the fruits of the Spirit. He's saying these are the very best ways to be human. These fruits are a demonstration that the Spirit of God is working within you to, to be the best example of a human being that you're capable of being. I find patience a really interesting one. I, patience is about the future. It's about how we interact with the future. This is something that's uniquely human. Animals don't really do this, and if they do, they do it to a limited degree. And squirrels might store up nuts for the winter or whatever, but, but, but animals don't really plan and predict the future in the way that we do, not in a long-term way. And patience, Paul says, is the best way of interacting with the future. Of dealing with it. So I thought it'd be useful, first of all, to look at unhealthy ways as a contrast. And these are ways that Paul in Romans 12 in our passage today might call the patterns of the world. These are the ways of dealing with the future that aren't so good. The first is patience is opposite. Impatience. Now, impatience is wanting life to rush by to get on to the next thing, always eager to, to get the next thing on the horizon. For an exciting thing to happen or to, or to get like a, a birthday present or whatever it might be. I'm sure we've all had things that we're impatient for. Perhaps you could throw a few things in the comments and chat about it as, as I talk. And it's very easy to be impatient at the moment in this time of coronavirus. It's very easy to long for it to be over, to long to see relatives in their houses again, to long to hug that person that you've not seen for a long time. And impatience, it's a longing for tomorrow to arrive, often at the, at the neglect of today. And this has really serious implications. Because looking to the future with impatience often results in a life full of yearning and chasing after something that never quite arrives. Because when it, when it does, you're always looking for the next thing. There's always something else. At the extreme end of impatience, you end up wishing your life away. You're never quite satisfied. And Christians do this as well, right? Like, I know Christians who have pined for that life in that other place with God, some ethereal other type of existence, at the expense of the life they are living right here, right now, the life that, ironically, God created them for. And it's this kind of impatience the great prophet Yoda speaks, and I'm paraphrasing slightly here, but he says to Luke Skywalker, you spend all your life looking away to the future, to the horizon. Never your mind on where you are. Hmm? What you are doing? He's saying that Luke is always here. That's the camera. <laughs> He's saying that Luke is always here, rather than being here, present. So should you live completely in the present instead? No, I don't think you should. I think that that's the second way that people with no patience live. They're not impatient because they never look into the future. They always live right here, right now caring only about the moment. 
The attitude that the producer doesn't matter leads to all kinds of problems as well, though, right? It leads to thousands of people packing a beach during a pandemic. It means that you never save money or resources because you spend everything now. It means you're more likely to neglect your health or your education because you don't care about tomorrow. It counters the impatience of wishing the world away with hedonism. Also not good. The goal is not to live with your head on the horizon or to live completely in the now. The goal is to live well now with an eye on the future, planning for it properly. Preparing for what is to come. So how do we approach the future with patience? Well, the Bible, I think, suggests that the answer is sacrifice, which I'm sure is exactly what you expect me to say, right? Paul, in our passage today in Romans 12, and you may have thought when that passage was read out, what has this got to do with patience? Paul says that if we make our lives a sacrifice, and that's a serious sacrifice to make, by the way, then we will not be conforming to the pattern of the world, to hedonism or impatience, but instead we'll be able to see what God's will is. In other words, he says, if you sacrifice, it means that you can see and move towards the future more clearly. So what does sacrifice entail? Well, in the ancient world, a sacrifice is basically offering some of your flock if you're a shepherd or some of your grain if you're a farmer so that God might look favorably upon you in the future. And it seemed like the people who sacrificed seemed to do better in life. But this kind of physical act is just a dramatization, really. Maybe, maybe you could say it's a ritual of something that is deeply psychologically true within human beings. Sacrifice in its broadest form is giving up something that you value today so that things might go well for you tomorrow. Do you see that there's a link between today and tomorrow that those other ways of interacting with the future don't offer? It doesn't neglect either. Sacrifice thinks about both. And the lesson that people learned over time and, and the genius that they had to transform it into ritual was that if you sacrifice something of value today, it has some kind of transcendent utility. It helps you to live better tomorrow. Now, in the ancient world, that looked like sheep or, or goats or produce that you'd farm, but we know what it's like to sacrifice today. We all do it. We've all given up something for a better tomorrow. So at school, when you were at school, you may have, um, well, you may still be at school. You may sacrifice a social life to study hard for your exams in order that you might have a better life. At coffee time after church, you might sacrifice that third biscuit with your cup of coffee because you know that it will affect your health tomorrow. And again, animals struggle with this. The lion that kills the zebra struggles to save some for tomorrow. The monkey in the cookie jar experiment, the famous experiment where the monkey puts his hand in the cookie jar and it's the opening is wide enough to put his hand in, but it's not wide enough for him to grab a cookie and take it out again while still holding the cookie. And the monkey can't let go of the cookie because the monkey doesn't know how to sacrifice. The monkey doesn't know that if it gives up instant gratification, tomorrow will be better. And we do know how to sacrifice, and we do it long term, and we do it often intergenerationally. Parents and grandparents often strive to hand something on to their children. This is a Facebook post from an author that I like called Donald Miller. And 
here's, here's the post. He's handing on um, the, the place that he owns. He says, sunset from the barn at Goose Hill. Someday the construction will wrap up and the gardens will grow. The process for so many good things happens slower than you want. I keep reminding myself that doing things right is better than doing things fast. And that a book or a garden or a family isn't something you build only for yourself, but for those who come behind. I don't think Goose Hill will ever be finished. We'll just hand it to the next generation to continue the work of hospitality. And, well, weeding the gardens. Then years later, the same sun will set on them. We don't get to finish the world. We just get to make it a little better. Patience is the key. Patience is the key. Seeing the future, even imperfectly, and and choosing to sacrifice in order to make it a reality is hard. But that's part of the word patience, right? Patience comes from the Latin patiens, which means to suffer. This is why a person in a hospital who is suffering is called a patient. To be patient is to suffer. It's hard. Why is it hard? Because it's, it's a difficult thing to negotiate with the future. To live in the moment or to be impatient is a refusal to suffer which ironically almost always leads to misery in the end. Sacrifice leads to joy. You suffer in the moment, but it leads to joy. And we know this to be true as a follower of Jesus. He encourages us to take up our cross and follow him. It's not easy. It was never meant to be. We walk a long and narrow path full of hardship for the sake of great joy. All of which means that we are to have patient lives. Not only in saving money or or looking after the waistline, but also in spiritual things. It's so tempting to think that when we come to Christ, all our problems will be solved in a finger click. That a miracle will just change our heart and make tomorrow amazing. But that's not patience. Patience is sacrificing every day, giving time and effort and prayer and listening and reading, fellowship with others, loving our neighbour, doing the things of the kingdom rather than the things that we would selfishly prefer to do in the moment. And it's through sacrifice that God is changing us. And it's better that the change is slow. Because when it's slow, it's lasting. The flashbang miracle may be spectacular. But it's also often lacking in foundation. Instead, we have a God who, as Paul puts it elsewhere, began a good work in us. And is continuing it to completion. This is why I'm, I'm leery when, when I hear preachers say that God wants to give you what you need right now. You just have to have enough faith, right? Patience speaks against that. It says that God is more impor- interested. God is more interested in helping you become the person you were created to be, to become more fully human. And that process is slow. It's often painful and it involves suffering and sacrifice. The walk is less about receiving stuff and more about becoming something. The book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible, speaks several times of the patient endurance of God's people. And the book ends with the kingdom of God descending to earth. That's the end goal. That's the future. That's out here. The kingdom fully present, but it comes with patience. Slowly. Like a tree growing toward the sky. And bearing fruit in time. Sacrificing allows us to be fully alive in the present moment right here without either ignoring or coveting the future. If you found yourself doing either of those two things, 
and would like to be more patient, what is there that you could sacrifice for the sake of yourself and for the sake of the world? Is it time? Is it relationships? Honey. Goals, ambitions. Whatever it may be, would you think about it? Would you think about interacting with the future in a more fully human way? 